Good morning. Welcome to the Newswire here on Sports Grid. Craig Mish back with you here for another edition of our wonderful show. 60 minutes of news content information surrounding the sports betting universe. Thanks for being part of it once again here on the program. It is NBA playoff season. Playing games begin tonight. Eric Lindquist is going to join us about 30 minutes from now to go over the very latest in the National Basketball Association. Also, Mike Mazio joins us from Legal Sports Report. We've got it all covered for you here on the show and naturally some very big stories surrounding the world of sports wagering, which we're going to begin with actually here on the show today. So a correlation with the NBA and sports betting as we begin and great work by the folks over at Action Network who first reported this this morning as the saga of this player in the NBA, Jonte Porter, and some potential improprieties as it pertains to sports betting props on himself seem to be in play. Now, how about this reporting that the Raptor Center owned and operated a VIP account at FanDuel in the state of Colorado that wagered millions of dollars from 2021 to 2023. He allegedly placed over a thousand wagers at the sports book. This is a player in the NBA. Now his FanDuel account activity ceased a few weeks before he signed a two-way contract with the Raptors, allegedly thousands and thousands of sports bets coming from his account, but none of which, at least according to this report, are on the NBA or on college basketball as well. In addition, a Discord account was found with Porter where he gives advice, allegedly, on cryptocurrency and sports betting and so this is potentially just the tip of the iceberg which surrounds very specifically some very big sports wagers on his props individually involved in games back in january and march in fact the sports book totals over on DraftKings had a points total of seven and a half points five and a half rebounds and he finished the game with zero points and two rebounds in that game in March. Now, if you look back even in January, which is where the first time that this happened, his total on January 26th, five and a half points, four and a half rebounds, one and a half assists, and a half made threes, left the game with an issue. He only played four minutes, no points, three rebounds, one assist, three attempted. So these all went under the total, and this sounded a little bit of an alarm. But then the plot thickened on March the 20th. Because DraftKings set another total for Porter and his props, seven and a half points, five and a half rebounds in that game, in that game left with a different issue. He only played three minutes and had no points and two rebounds. Now, again, as far as the reports are concerned, at least for the time being, very specifically on his props, none of the reporting states that he bet on himself in the NBA on any of his props or anything to do with college basketball. But again, this is his individual account, and that's where the story begins, but probably not ends for today. All right, in the WNBA last night, much brighter news. Caitlin Clark was drafted number one, as most people expected, by the Indiana Fever. And naturally, congratulations to her. Not a surprise here, as you couldn't even bet this over on FanDuel or DraftKings. She was just too big of a favorite. Everyone knew that she was going to go first overall. In fact, what an incredible journey for Clark, who was two-time AP Player of the Year, Big Ten Player of the Year three times, most career points in NCAA tournament history, and when she was drafted first overall, she did a press conference and talked about the journey from going where she was to where she is now. Can you take us through the emotions of being the number one all-time scorer in the NCAA to the emotions you felt when you heard your name called today? Yeah, honestly, like... I feel like this was definitely a little bit more emotional for me. And I think that's because like when you're in the heat of competition, like you don't have time to like really feel your emotions. Like you're so competitive and you're so fiery, like you're not really worried about all that. And I think that was like the biggest thing through my career is like, first of all, I was able to have a lot of closure in the way my career ended and uh, everything that was, I was able to do. Obviously I played the maximum number of games I could play my senior year and obviously we didn't win, but um, you know, I feel like you did everything you can uh, to be in that moment and, compete as hard as you can but when you know when you're kind of just sitting at a table waiting for your name to be called I think that really allows the emotions to feed you and you're with your family like obviously playing a basketball game I'm not out there with my family so sharing that moment with them and and enjoying it and people that have really had my back and believed in me more than anyone is is super special 
no surprise last night, Caitlin Clark's jerseys uh, went on sale and sold out pretty quick from the Indiana Fever, of course, on all of the uh, appropriate websites. But word is, is that you can buy them yet again. So sold out quickly and they're replenished. This is what happens in this day and age of sports. They sell out and then they make more. So you'll be able to get one. No problem. All right. FanDuel has become the primary sports betting app in Washington, D.C. This is now official. They took over gambit dc which was the long-standing running sports betting app in dc that people complained about for many years they launched in 2020 uh naturally in person at nationals park you could bet on bet mgm and caesars and FanDuel, but now uh it looks like they're finally getting online and getting in the right shape there and maybe that's betting on the nba because the play-in games begin tonight in the national basketball association in fact we have the pelicans taking on the lakers tonight and the kings taking on the Golden State Warriors. We'll see how LeBron and company end up doing. And naturally, Steph Curry, two future Hall of Famers at the very least, going at it over in the West. The East will play their play-in games tomorrow night in the National Basketball Association. Meanwhile, we just found out this morning that when the Milwaukee Bucks begin their series against the Indiana Pacers later this weekend, Giannis will not be part of the Bucks lineup. He's going to miss a few games. They're hoping to get him back at some point in the series, but probably going to miss at least Game one, he's had that issue with that strain to his calf. They projected a couple of weeks, at the very least him being out. Who knows if it'll be longer than that. USA Basketball has finalized their 2024 Paris Olympics roster, getting closer and closer. LeBron, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, Jason Tatum, Anthony Davis, Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards. A lot of names on this list. Tyrese Halliburton, Bam Adebayo. They still have one uh, spot open. Trey Young, meanwhile looking for a normal amount of minutes as he's getting ready to play against the Chicago Bulls in their play-in game. He missed 23 games. He returned to action. He says he'll play normal minutes on Wednesday night against the Chicago Bulls. Also, the Nets have finally found their new head coach. It is Jordy Fernandez over from the Sacramento Kings. Uh, He was on the Denver Nuggets on their staff as well. The Nets finished the season 32-50. and Fernandez is now the fourth coach for the Brooklyn Nets since uh, 2020. All right, in Major League Baseball last night, the Miami Marlins had a lead that they lost yet again. Sixth time this season, the Marlins have blown a game, but some interesting notes going on last night in that game uh, where the Marlins ended up losing and Skip Schumacher was ejected from the game and discussed exactly what happened with an incident where the Giants called for a member of the bullpen, but the wrong member was sent out. Because once you signal, you're supposed to start the clock and come out. Rogers comes out, the clock starts. He called the wrong guy, or the wrong guy came out. I don't know exactly what happened, but that clock starts. It's not my fault that the, that the wrong pitcher came out. Duvall should be coming out right behind him if they called the wrong pitcher. He got an extra couple minutes to get loose, which that is... We have been called for ball one many times when our pitchers are been getting extra pitches in the bullpen. So we even get a ball called uh on gordon it should have been ball one and he should not have gotten extra pitches so i'm still trying to figure out what happened we'll be right back that bashed him will be eating their words this year pretty heavily favored to be a first round pick minus 400 earlier this week but that's not the surprise if you're drafting jj mccarthy in the first half of the first round you clearly believe not only is it starter he's going to be your starter for years to come but a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round the tape doesn't lie baby only on sports grid Victor Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they probably will. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. 
Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted, but here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsCrit. Welcome back to Newswire. Almost one week away from the NFL draft. It, it doesn't feel like that because we just had so much going on with the Masters and the NCAA tournament. But this time next week, we will be in full go. Probably some trades, I would guess, between now and next week as well. So let's bring in Jacob Kamaker of Sporting News because we're going to go over some of the potential options in the top three. And naturally, you know what time of year this is, Jacob. It's quarterback inflation season, right? Like the season ends in college football and the NFL. They're like, oh, there could be three quarterbacks going in the first round. Then all of a sudden, we get to February, and it's like maybe five. And then March, it's like maybe eight. And then now it's like we're going to just have the whole first round be drafted with quarterbacks. And, and that's the dynamic that I think that so, so many teams, Jacob, are desperate to win. And the way to do that is developing a quarterback, isn't it? It is. You have to have a good quarterback to succeed at the NFL nowadays. And that makes teams willing to take risks on guys that you might look at and say, oh, that's a second-round prospect probably. But you say – hey, we only have a pick in the first round. We can't guarantee that this guy's going to be available but next time we're picking, so that drives the price up, like you said. So I think we're going to see three quarterbacks go with the first three picks, and then there's at least three other guys that could get their name called in the first round. Yeah, I agree. There you go. So there's the board. And, and by the way, since last week, this has increased the odds to minus 135 up from minus 125 to have this order with Williams, uh, Daniels, and Drake May go one, two, three. Uh, then the long shots are Williams first, May second, Daniels third, followed by J.J. McCarthy sneaking into the top three. I, look, outside of Williams, I got to tell you, Jacob, I'm not ruling out anything. I've seen this play out before in the NFL. So, uh, well, you know, why not take a shot? I, I, I guess to be in the room and figure out whether or not J.J. McCarthy is going to go top three, that's kind of the key here to this. Yeah, that's what's going to determine the winning bet here, I think. Because I think the commanders are really starting to lock in on Jaden Daniels. Uh, that's what all the reporting has said. I know Adam Schefter from ESPN has indicated that they're leaning towards him. And I just think Daniels is a really good fit for what Cliff Kingsbury wants to do on offense. So I think he's going to be the pick there. So it's all about, will the Patriots take Drake May or J.J. McCarthy? And I think the gap between the two of them in terms of how the Patriots view them isn't that big. But I think they've kind of been more on the Drake May train this whole lead up to the draft. So it would surprise me if he's on the board and they went with McCarthy. So as boring as it is to take the minus money bet here, I think I'm going to go with Drake May still being the third player off the board here. I think it's going to go Williams, Daniels, May. I think that's going to be what the consensus says. 
think that's what's going to happen. But if there is a wild card, it would be McCarthy overtaking May in that Patriots pick. But I don't see that happening yet. Yeah, uh, it will be interesting. I'm, I'm sure we'll have enough data on this next week and info rumors to figure this out. Now, look, every bet, I want to be clear on here, okay, here on Sports Grid with you, Jacob, and everybody else. There's risk involved with every bet that you make, okay? There's no guarantees on anything. Minus 700 doesn't matter, no guarantees. I got to tell you, if I ever was going to bet a minus 180, this would be the bet for me, Jacob. This would be it because, it, I mean, this is every single year. Total number of quarterbacks drafted in round one. It's always set too low. The total is four and a half, minus 180. The under is plus 134. I mean, look, I guess you could find a parlay if you're scared to lay this kind of juice, and I don't blame you because that's a lot to lay, to take a shot on that. But I I feel really good, (laughs) Jacob, about this happening. How about you? I do too. And the funny thing is, we said this last year. I actually remember being on the show, and we were thinking three and a half quarterbacks was the over. And we're like, oh, that's definitely going to happen because Will Levis will probably go at some point. Um, And he didn't. That was the one kind of wild card but this year is different because it seems like four guys are locked into the top 10 picks uh mccarthy and the top three quarterbacks we just talked right. about but then there are two other guys this year michael Penix jr uh who seems to be rising a little bit right now in the opinion of coaches and bo nicks who's a rock solid quarterback both of those guys have the potential to go in the first round maybe not in the early stages maybe someone trades back into the first round to get them but I think because you have two guys like that that would push you to the over, I think you have to say, I'm going to take the over. Especially with that 12th pick, the Broncos might end up being desperate for a quarterback, and they could do a Christian Ponder type thing and reach for a guy that people are saying, hey, that was a late first round, early second round prospect. You just took it number 12 overall. So the over could hit very early with this type of bet. So I'm, I'm right there with you on it. Now, now, do you feel the Broncos are like that big wild card team maybe on this this board here to take either Bo Nix or Penix or someone else? Because the odds certainly seem to indicate that they're the team that could end up plunging into that quarterback pool uh, sooner than later. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. I think they're 100% a wild card team. They need a quarterback. They currently have two on their roster, Jarrett Stidham and Ben DiNucci. Sean Payton probably didn't go to Denver to orchestrate a massive rebuild. He probably wants to get his guy at quarterback. And, hey, maybe that is Stidham. Maybe he really likes what he's seeing behind the scenes. But I would presume that he wants to draft a guy. He just doesn't know if J.J. McCarthy is going to be there for him or if the Broncos can move up to potentially get one of the other guys if they slip a little bit. I think that's going to be the big question about the Broncos. And then if they're sitting there at 12 and those top four quarterbacks are on the off the board, would they take a Bo Nix? Would they take a Michael Penix Jr.? I wouldn't rule it out. I think that's definitely a possibility. I think the bigger possibility for them, though, would be if they get to that point and they're looking at a quarterback trying to trade down, they don't have a second-round pick, maybe they recoup some value there and then could take one of those quarterbacks later. Is that a risk? Yeah, because one of them might come off the board. But if you're confident no one else is going to take a quarterback and can move down six to eight spots, I think that's something that the Broncos would look at doing. All right. Now, the, the other wild card team, so to speak, is always the Las Vegas Raiders. Hard to figure out what they're going to do every draft. Uh, Michael Penix Jr. is one of the possibilities for them if they go quarterback, although they did bring in Gardner Minshew in the offseason. But the odds makers on FanDuel, Jacob, are telling us that this is anybody's player to pick, honestly. I mean, the Raiders are the favorites here at plus 380, but you know, right behind them is Minnesota. You have Denver as well. Some speculation on Seattle, I, I think, is fair nonetheless. But, look, I really love this player in college, and I think, Jacob, for me, if he didn't end his season the way that he did, I think he would be a rock-solid top 15 pick. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And so I guess there's some questions surrounding his future and you know, maybe potential project, at least for the first year in the NFL. Right, and I think the other thing I play is he's had several season-ending injuries, including two torn ACLs, so... That's really what's driving him down boards. But I know he's gotten some buzz lately. He was great at the combine, great at his pro day. I think coaches are impressed by him. So I think there's a good chance that he can go earlier than people expect. And it wouldn't surprise me. I know Bo Nix to the Broncos is the hot pick. But it wouldn't surprise me if the Broncos end up liking Michael Penix more and just say, hey, this guy's deep ball throwing ability just is a little bit better than Nix. I'm going to go for him at this point. Sean Payton might say, I can develop this guy into a star. So. At plus 470 with those odds, 
I like the idea of backing that and saying, hey, if the Broncos are going to take a guy early, maybe it's not Knicks. Maybe it's Penix. I know all the spoken odds indicate that it's Knicks for the Broncos, but, you know, anything can happen in the NFL draft. That's why we love it so much. Yeah. And and finally, let's get to the potential trades that could happen. And at least Jacob, again, you know, not, not being on the inside, certainly not knowing, but Arizona is the one team in that top 10 that keeps being talked about as a possibility for a trade because they've committed to Kyler Murray and some team could potentially you know, move up to take a quarterback there. I don't know. It would be the quarterback that we've talked about yet. Uh, you know, maybe somebody else, or maybe it is four quarterbacks going in a row, but to me, that's the most plausible team. How about you? I think it's either the Cardinals or chargers that would trade down. And I think if the Cardinals don't trade down, I think the chargers would love to because They have a lot of needs that were created by Jim Harbaugh coming in, kind of cleaning up the cap situation there on offense. And this is a good receiver and O-line draft. And there's, I think, probably 15 Michigan players are going to get drafted. So Harbaugh might like adding some of those extra late round picks to grab some of his best guys from college, maybe bring them over to the Chargers. So I like them as a trade down candidate too. All right. By this time next week, we'll have a much better idea. Jacob, enjoy the rest of your week. We'll catch up again ahead of the draft next week. Thanks for coming on Newswire. All right. Thanks for having me, Craig. Take care. All right. It is Jacob Kamaker with us. Coming up next, we recap our top story of the day. NBA player Jonte Porter with a lot of money being bet on sports. We'll talk about it with Mike Mazio next. that bashed him will be eating their words this year pretty heavily favored to be a first round pick minus 400 earlier this week but that's not the surprise if you're drafting jj mccarthy in the first half of the first round you clearly believe not only is it starter he's going to be your starter for years to come but a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round the tape doesn't lie baby only on sports grid Victor Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they <laughs> probably will. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted. But here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid.
All right, welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Boy, Texas Rangers just announced a few minutes ago uh, former first round draft pick Jack Leiter is being called up to start on Thursday. So that's a big piece of baseball news for you here on the show. We're going to get to some basketball news now here with Mike Mazio of Legal Sports Report and uh, joins us under the similar circumstances. Some sports betting controversy going on. We always bring in Mike because he's got some great opinions on this, he's covered sports for a long time, and certainly. Over at Legal Sports Report, we'll probably have a lot more on this story. Mike, thanks for coming on uh, Newswire today. I read this, uh, I guess, credit to Action Network, if I'm not mistaken, who who broke the story earlier today, learning that Mike uh, Jonte Porter, whose props had some very strange betting tendencies, it's fair to say, in January and March on his individual props, it was revealed that he's been betting millions of dollars. But thus far, Mike, thus far, not on the NBA, not on himself, and not on college basketball as well. That's where we stand right now. But again, still an investigation going on. I don't think we've hit the end of this thing. Yeah, Craig, and I think that's why we use the word allegedly. And uh, so we'll see, right? This was pretty eye-opening. Uh, the Colorado regulator yesterday had emailed me and, and probably them with the letter that they had uh, sent sports books and asked if anyone had a you know, uh, an account with Jonte Porter's name. And they said, you know, we don't have any in active investigations going on earlier in the day. And then, you know, they had until the end of Monday. So maybe this came out after, maybe this is unrelated to that. If it's, you know, whether he had active accounts or not, this seemed to be from uh, 2021 to 23, according to the Action Network, which broke this story. So like you said, credit to them uh, that he had this VIP account and was betting millions of dollars. We know he had a, a Discord where he was giving, I think, investing advice and then maybe some gambling advice as well. And then when he signed the tweet with the Raptors, it seemed like this account closed. But obviously, if you connect the dots, and again, using the word allegedly, just in case, uh, you could see yeah. that perhaps he would know people that would be involved, potentially, if he was going to give insider info out that I'm going to be injured and not play and take all the under props and potentially parlay them or do them individually, and they all hit, and then these betters are able to get paid out. And then, again, allegedly, because we don't know exactly what happened, certainly you could right. speculate maybe he did get some payback for that. I don't know that, again... Don't know that for a fact that is speculating. We always want to have the facts come out before, you know, especially as reporters, we draw any conclusions. But again, the way that uh, Adam Silver talked, that it was a cardinal sin, he had the power to ban this guy for life. A lot of these sports leagues, when they're dealing with uh, gambling investigations, will just say, it's an active investigation, we have no comment. The fact that Silver went that far as to say, this is a cardinal sin, this can't happen, I have the power to ban this guy for life. He is a two-way player. You wonder, you know, for the NBA's sake, if it was a superstar, how they would react to this. This is a player that is, uh, you know, a bench guy that if, in fact, he is suspended for life, you know, it'll be impactful for sure, but it wouldn't have the impact of an Otani. You know, he was exonerated, obviously, in baseball, but that kind of name. Right. So, you know, uh, if regardless of what happens with Porter, you know, he's not a big name, but you hope that uh, this isn't true. You know, you hope that he didn't do any of this, but certainly you could connect the dots here given his betting activity and his knowledge of betting and wonder, you know, whatever happened it's just bad optics all around not good for the league with all the integrity things it's trying to protect the league and the players spit uh split 167 million dollars in gambling related revenues we know that uh players can have you know non-passive investments in these companies less than one percent obviously for obvious reasons but you know there is a lot of financial relationships business relationships and therefore these leagues are always going to be questioned when these things come out and unfortunately the nba was really the last of the major sports to deal with this they're dealing with it, so we're obviously going to have a ton more. This investigation certainly far from over at this point. Yeah, and, and, and to be very clear, there's going to be more revealed and investigated, but as of this moment, according to this report from the Action Network, we want to be clear, as of this moment, Porter can bet millions of dollars on anything except for the NBA and basketball, etc. So for the time being, that's where we stand with this now once more investigation comes out and information you know certainly that could completely change the story but for now that's where it's at where is california at with sports betting i'm seeing the sports betting operators and comments coming out of california mike they are frustrated uh fanduel now speaking out i mean look they all want obviously they all want sports betting to happen in california uh, you know it keeps getting voted down i know the tribes are involved as well it feels like my state here mike in the, in the state of florida so inevitably here's what i think mike i think this is going to get done but it just may not be anytime soon they'll figure it out one day agreed craig and i think it was just eye-opening the way fanduel went about this and has gone about this hiring uh 
you know, executives with tribal experience, a lot of uh, links to San Manuel with uh, Frank Sizemore and Ricky Tannenbaum coming aboard as executives at FanDuel, really trying to mend that relationship that was a mess since uh, Prop 26 and Prop 27 uh, failed miserably in 2022. You know, the tribes, again, came out at this conference that I was at and said, we're going to be the ones who decide when California sports betting happens legally. You're going to be, you know, our, our tech providers, not the operators. Your brands aren't going to be front and center. That's really the question, right? Everybody's kind of playing nice right now. And FanDuel is the one that's at the forefront of, you know, learning from its mistakes and saying we can't operate the way that we thought we could, where we could just, you know, come in the marketplace, uh, spend a ton of money to try to get voters on our side. That didn't work. The, I mean, the prop failed. I think it only got 18% of the vote, which is incredible. Even the polling you know, that they did uh, showed they could get more. So they've got a lot of work to do. Everybody's got to get on the same page. First, the tribes, 110 of them have to figure out how they want to share that revenue. And then again, with FanDuel and DraftKings wanting to come in the marketplace, can they get their brands out in front? They're going to want their brands in there. You know, is there going to be a, a monetary figure where the tribes acquiesce? Because they're, they came out, James Siva of Sinaga, the, the chairman there, and said, you know, you're going to be the B2B operators, basically, you're not going to have the B2C opportunities you have in other jurisdictions. So we'll see, uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding, right? That's what Jacob Mejia said, one of the Pechanga uh, tribal members said, you know, they've said all the right things right now, but, you know, when FanDuel and DraftKings ask for their brands and potentially the tribes say no, you know, are they going to be okay with taking some sort of revenue split and not having their brands front and center? You know, that's a question that remains to be seen, but, you know, Victor Rocha of uh, the Indian Gaming Association, their conference chair, he suggested 2026 retail and maybe 2028 mobile. Now, obviously, that's a long time away, but there's a lot of work to be done here. And it was all, I think it was really positive that FanDuel came out in front. You know, uh, Christian Janeski, their president, had taken a ribbing at an earlier tribal conference. Amy Howe kind of took her lumps a little bit. Uh, but they're saying all the right things, so we'll see when they actually have to try to hammer something out, whether that relationship you know, can be mended in time or whether it becomes contentious again. But right now, you know, everybody's playing nice, and uh, we'll see where we go from here. Yeah, still some time to figure out with California, especially uh, with us getting to the midpoint of the year pretty soon. Believe it or not, it's going to be the summer pretty soon here. It feels like we just got started in 2024. Uh, okay, also some news from FanDuel coming out of this. Uh, Mike, no surprise here. They don't want to see a tax hike in Illinois. Illinois is looking at New York going 50%. Uh, yeah, we want the same thing. Every state is going to try and follow suit. It's just a matter of how far they can push the needle. And again, it's politics. It's money. My guess, Mike, is Illinois will get a tax increase. It will not be as much as New York. And they'll settle somewhere in the middle. It's a very big state. Chicago is one of the top markets in the country. It's one of the biggest sports betting markets in the country. And I, I, I get it. And I understand it from FanDuel's perspective. But they're going to have to negotiate this one. Yeah, Craig, when these operators in New York decided that they were going to do the 51% tax rate, inevitably it was going to lead to massive success because New York's the number one market, uh, 900 million in tax revenue from online sports betting for the last fiscal year. Uh, every state is going to say, wow, that's a lot of money. Why can't we get our hands on that? Even if it's not 900 million, let's get more. You know, Illinois agreed to the 15%. Now the governor says, let's raise it to 35. I think Pennsylvania is at 35. Uh, we've seen... Uh, New Jersey put in, uh, you know, potential legislation to raise theirs from 14% to 30%. So a lot of these states and Ohio uh, doubled its tax rate. It's governor came out in a budget proposal. So that went from 10% to 20%. So a lot of these states are trying to increase. And we'll see, yeah, Illinois uh, may be next year. And yeah, Fandle's trying to stop this, obviously asking uh, customers to contact their state representatives to try to change this. And you can understand from the operator's perspective, they don't want to lose that revenue in states where they have what they feel is a competitive tax rate they could bring competition into the marketplace. But you know, for these states, it's just no surprise. They, some of them have deficits and they can use that tax revenue money for you know, more important things than gambling, our space, you know, to potentially mm -hmm. house people or provide healthcare or you know, transportation in New York's case to improve the subway system uh, with that additional money. Um, and then gambling addiction as well. They want that revenue so they can find out who the addicted gamblers are and get them you know, that state funded help that they need. And so, yeah, I think it's going to be super hard for these operators. They have to figure out eventually, DraftKings said in New York, you know, we can't continue this way. It's not sustainable for us. We may offer, you know, offer uh, customers worse odds. You know, we'll see if it comes to that. So far, it hasn't. Uh, but you do wonder, yeah, if all these states go up to 30 percent, what the uh, ramifications are. Uh, but you can understand from a legislator, regulator perspective, more money for our, our citizens on something that is a vice. It's not surprising they want to go that way. So we'll see if uh, 
you know, FanDuel and DraftKings could figure out a way to, to compromise perhaps to get a better number. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised in Illinois if it's 35%, Craig, like you said. Yeah, some, somewhere in the middle seems to be probably fair for both sides. Uh, all right, well, Mike, enjoy the rest of your week. I know the NBA playoffs coming up. I know you'll be locked in on that. And thanks again for coming on Newswire. We'll catch up again next week here on the show. Thanks again. Thanks so much, Craig. Always appreciate you having me. Have a great week. All right, Mike Mazio from Legal Sports Report. We'll dive more into the NBA coming up next. Eric Lindquist is going to be with us. We'll preview some of the games going on tonight and, of course, this weekend in the NBA's playoff season, which is beginning right now. And also, in case you missed it, Sports Grid picks up a very big, significant award. For those of you who are watching us, streaming us somewhere online, maybe you have a brand new TV and all of a sudden you're finding out about us on one of your streaming platforms and you're wondering how you did, well, look, there's more information on that and the success that we've had. Greg Sussman here on our network is join us and tell us more about the award that we picked up next when we return here on Newswire. Don't go away. People that bashed him will be eating their words this year. Pretty heavily favored to be a first-round pick, minus 400 earlier this week. But that's not the surprise. If you're drafting J.J. McCarthy in the first half of the first round, you clearly believe not only is he a starter, he's going to be your starter for years to come. But A popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round. The tape doesn't lie, baby. Only on SportsGrid. Victor Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they probably will. Only on Sports Grid. 89-87, 0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted. But here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid.
Very big 48 hours here for us at Sports Grid. For those of you who are unfamiliar with fast channels, this is the way of the future, folks. I mean, you're able to access basically TV shows, sports shows, business, and so many other pieces of content in different ways. And so proud of us here at Sports Grid is we've been able to give you that content via fast channels. And in fact, recently, uh, Synopsis held their annual sports media awards. And they've done it for more than a decade. And Sports Grid, folks, was the winner. And uh, it's sort of incredible to think about it. Uh, congratulations, by the way, the finalists. Uh, Sports Grid wins the number one fast channel, F-A-S-T, as you see right there. Uh, also up for this award, DraftKings Network, Tennis Channel, CBS Sports, Glazo. But Greg Sussman is the vice president of content here at Sports Grid. Deserves a lot of the credit here putting this all together. And, you know, Greg, certainly congratulations to you and the executive team here at Sports Grid for this great, great award that was uh, presented and won. No, I appreciate it, Craig, but I don't really deserve any credit. It's, it's to you guys, the, the team that is delivering on a daily basis for us. And it, you mentioned some of the competition that we had in the category, and I'm so proud of this team. Shows like this, uh, the team behind this, of course, the job that you do on a daily basis, uh, it, what, it makes what we do very rewarding, and, and it makes it fun. And to be able to compete with uh, some of the names that you mentioned, like the Tennis Channel and the DraftKings Network, and get some recognition for the hard work that everybody does on a daily basis. It's very, very cool. Uh, and as I said that that day, right, it's it's kind of the start, right? We've been doing this, and you mentioned when when previewing this award, it's just like, hey, on fast you could watch everything, and that's what's made us uh, so fruitful in this endeavor being able to watch us for free. You buy a TV, you can watch us. You download an app, you can watch us. We are everywhere, and that's what's so great about Sports Grid. Yeah, and I, and I want to expand on that before you go, because I think that most people who are streaming and watching you and I, Greg, right now, are watching us in that way. And you and I have been together, by the way, in this broadcast industry for like two decades here, <laughs> one way or another, you and I have worked together. But the evolution of where this has happened, where people are watching us, getting themselves a Vizio or a Samsung or whatever TV, and just being able to hit a button without paying is sort of the wave of the future. And I think that's why we're seeing so many of these new channels, whether it's for fast channel or apps or anything else. And I would imagine that the next, we see what happened in the last five, 10 years. I would only imagine that here at Sports Grid, we have so much more to deliver in the next five, 10 years as well. Oh, yeah. We, we're not going to stop. We've had six consecutive quarters now, Craig. We've been the watched, most watched fast channel in the sports genre. That's over 50 other fast channels. So we're, we're doing something right here over the last six quarters. And, and obviously, Super Bowl, a, a prime opportunity for us to bring in more viewers and then continue on with all of our March Madness coverage, with all of our NFL draft coverage. And I think almost as importantly, the daily news that you're providing on a daily basis within the industry, you don't see that in uh, in other networks or on other networks, I should say. You don't see what you guys are talking about when it came to Jonte Porter to start today's show. And I think that kind of information, that combination of news with sports, with wagering advice and data and opportunities, that encompasses what Sports Grid does best. And I think those that have our free app or have the free channel on whatever TV device that they have and utilize, they're in a better position for it and they could learn something new uh, and find information that they can't find elsewhere. So I'm proud to be at Sports Grid. As you said, we've been together for a very, very long time in the industry, whether it's here or elsewhere. Uh, and I'm proud to continue working with you and, and everybody here at Sports Grid for the long run. All right, Greg, uh, I'll, we're going to get to the NBA. Let's give a quick preview. There may be people, I always say this, that are watching us right now, you and me, for the very first time. The NFL draft is next week. What kind of coverage will we have here at Sports Grid? Oh, I appreciate the tee up, Craig. That's a true professional. But we will be live for the entire first two rounds of the draft. Uh, we have great studio coverage beginning when the draft begins, 8 p.m. Eastern on Thursday, April 25th. We'll be live from our studio with both Adam Kaplan and Warren Sharp in studio with us to give us the live odds as they are breaking in live information from draft rooms. That's what Adam Kaplan will be able to provide. We'll have the 
ever-changing odds at our magic wall. And Ben Stevens, Joe Lisi, Kevin Walsh will anchor our coverage on Thursday, along with Mike Blewett in studio as well. Mike Blewett will also anchor our coverage on Friday, beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern for the second round. We'll have you covered both days during the draft, and of course, in all the hours and days leading up to the draft, Sports Grid has you covered from every single angle. All right, Greg Sussman, Vice President of Content. Greg, thanks for popping on here. We'll look forward to seeing all the coverage next week, your second screen for sports betting action during the NFL Draft. Thanks again. Thank you very much for having me, Greg. All right, Greg Sussman here with us. Now we move from the National Football League and award season, which we're a part of, to award season in the NBA. We're almost there. We're going to give out the Rookie of the Year, the MVP, and we're going to crown a new champion. But it all begins with the play-in games tonight. Eric Lindquist joins the show to discuss some of the potential options you can make in tonight's games in the West, and then we'll go to the East, and then we'll hopefully have some time to talk about the weekend as well. Hey, Eric, great to have you here on Newswire. Thanks for coming on. Good to be with you guys. Congratulations, obviously. Uh, fantastic award, fantastic content you guys are putting out routinely. Glad to, glad to be a small part of it here today. Well, thanks, Eric, and hopefully a small part of some winning wagers tonight. Let's get started in yes. the playing games over in the West. Marquee matchups, Hall of Famers. It doesn't get any better than this. This is what the NBA wanted. I don't know that the Lakers wanted this or the Warriors wanted this, but those two teams are very slight favorites tonight going into these games. We'll start off with LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers taking on the New Orleans Pelicans, a team that they have gone through before, total of 225 and a half. Is it just as simple for the Lakers, for the Warriors, for the Heat? Is it just as simple as these teams get hot at the right time and make a deep run? Can LeBron do it again? It has to begin tonight. Yeah, it has to begin tonight, but also the implications of this game, it's kind of a wonky one because the winner gets a prime date with the Denver Nuggets, whereas the loser gets an opportunity to host a game and then potentially play the Oklahoma City Thunder, the youngest team to ever get a one seed in NBA history. So it's kind of like, well, if you don't win this game, you're probably in a good spot still if you're a Lakers fan, knowing that you wouldn't run into... Until that very last series, they've just been a juggernaut here the last couple postseasons. So for me, it's really hard to look at the implications as anything other than we want to win. You know, having the Lakers be as old as they are, specifically LeBron James at 39, they definitely want to go out and win this one. But I will say, I'm staying away from those props because I think the minutes, if this game gets close, if this game gets out of hand, you could be running into some wonky game scripts. So for me, looking at some ancillary pieces on both sides. Okay. Now, as far as the Golden State Warriors are concerned, they've been here before. They're going to try and make another run toward a championship, but the Sacramento Kings have other ideas. Now, of course, missing a key piece to their Malik Monk being out for the year, but they're getting two points at home, and this is going to be, I think, an incredible crowd tonight. Is that enough to cover this plus two or maybe win the game outright? Uh, Warriors have been supremely inconsistent all season long. Yeah, so I ended up on the total here. It opened at 228 and a half. Right now, sitting at 223 and a half, 224, depending on where you're looking at. Feel pretty good about that one. This is going to be an electric atmosphere, no doubt about it, here in Sacramento. Uh, running back the game seven from last season, a great series between these two teams. I think this Malik Monk absence is gigantic. And as you start to go about pro like projecting minutes here for each specific side, Keon Ellis is going to have to be defensively incredible against Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and that backcourt because they just don't really have any other options, not having Kevin Herter and now Malik Monk going to be out as well here for tonight. So could be a very tight six, six and a half man rotation here from the Sacramento side. Could be looking at 48 minutes, like the entire game from Fox Sabonis here in this spot. I do think that total, I feel good about that, obviously having the line move my direction a little bit. As far as taking a side here, I actually slightly lean on the Golden State side. They have so many iterations of this lineup that they can go to. Trace Jackson Davis, not sure exactly what those minutes are going to look like in a playoff spot where they can definitely go Draymond Green at the five, but they have options. Jonathan Kamega now going to be coming off the bench more than likely. Chris Paul, of course. Brandon Pajemski's played good in limited minutes as well. This is a Golden State team that has lots of options. Sacramento really doesn't here in this spot. Going to have to play their core guys lots of minutes. All right, now tomorrow night, the playoff series begins for Joel Embiid, who's missed the majority of the second half of the season, but he will return to take on the Miami Heat. Philly is four-and-a-half-point favorites over a Heat team that loves to be in this spot. When you think they're out, they're not, and then they go very far. They're getting four-and-a-half points, one of the lower totals you'll see in a playoff game at 207 going into tomorrow night. Could you take the Heat and the points here? Another team that's been, Eric, impossible to read, at least during the regular season. 
Yeah, during the regular season for sure. But then Eric Spolstra puts on his magic hat and he just starts directing traffic with his magic wand. So it's incredible to watch. The the Miami Heat, in terms of the pace, the total you're talking about, 29th, 96.7 possessions per 48 minutes. Just a ridiculously lethargic pace that they're going to try to instill into this game, try to lower the variance here. But Joel Embiid's the best player on the floor. I think this is a very uh entertaining matchup this is definitely the one that i'm looking forward to the most because of the implications of this game you avoid boston by winning it if you go out and win that second game congratulations you get to play boston in the first round so huge implications to be able to play the new york knicks i think this is a pretty efficient spread here as well pretty tough for me to get after any of the spreads here outside of the next game that we'll cover of course but uh definitely looking right now at the board here for this game this is probably the one i have the least amount of interest in from a betting perspective, but the most amount of interest to watch. All right, so Eric, so uh, without further ado, let's get to the game maybe they have the most interest in, a team that's very familiar with this spot, the Atlanta Hawks, always feels like they're on the back end of the playoffs, trying to push their way in. Trey Young is back. Whether he's 100% healthy still remains to be seen. He says he is. Total 220 and a half. Chicago Bulls, three-point favorites in this matchup. Do you like a side or a total here? I like a side. I like the Chicago side a lot here. Hosting the game, you've got Atlanta coming in with Trey Young. You talked about the injury that he's coming off of. I don't know what to make of the minutes, but I do know what to make of the defense from him. It's not great. And now you're going up against Kobe White, who has struggled here in the last month of the season. But Ayo Desimu and Alex Caruso, as you ramp up his minutes, he is one of the most underrated players in the NBA. What he is able to do on the defensive side, we saw it with the Lakers in the bubble. We've seen it here in Chicago, too, awfully quietly, though, because the team obviously not as good. But Chicago here, I do think that they absolutely lay the hammer down. Jalen Johnson out for the Atlanta Hawks is kind of a gigantic omission. Had really shown a playmaking ability on the offensive end, can be a taller piece on the defensive end there to maybe help out on DeMar DeRozan. But without him, it's going to be really tough sledding, I think, for Atlanta to generate offense against this defensive front. Uh, the interior, Clint Capella is not adding a whole lot offensively, so you can't take advantage of Vooch there in that kind of capacity. So for me, Chicago minus three, my favorite play of the entire week. All right, Eric, before you go, any, any positions on any of the props going into the weekend? Yeah, so the props are really, really entertaining, and I'm going to throw a little bit of an audible because there have been some major line shifts here before. I didn't know what to make of the Brandon Ingram news here. Uh, Willie Green did say that he was going to ramp up his minutes, but coming off of just 24 in that first game against the Lakers in almost a month here, I thought Trey Murphy taking more on his points prop at 11.5 made sense. It's moved to 12.5, but I'm going to look at Jonas Valanciunas here. I like under 6.5 points for him, which is kind of wild. I think he's very live to play one rotation, potentially six minutes, and come out of this ball game. So for me, Jonas Valanciunas, it's a very, very short number. He can get there in seven minutes, but uh, this could be a problem. All right. Eric, great stuff as always. Thanks for coming again on Newswire. Enjoy the first play-in games of the NBA playoffs tonight. Thanks, Craig. All right. Coming up next, we wrap it up with a really nice gesture in Los Angeles from the executive's with the Clippers. We'll tell you what they did for their fans coming up next here on Newswire. Don't go away. People that bashed him will be eating their words this year. Pretty heavily favored to be a first-round pick, minus 400 earlier this week. But that's not the surprise. If you're drafting J.J. McCarthy in the first half of the first round, you clearly believe not only is he a starter, he's going to be your starter for years to come. But a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round. The tape doesn't lie, baby. Only on Sports Grid. Victor Hoffman right now can probably hit it right where he's looking on the range. But the problem is when you get out to a golf course, especially like Augusta National, it's a big, big picture. You can see yeah. every shot in the world, but the targets are really, really small. I feel like whoever we pick is going to win. Like, I feel like we have the power to choose the winner of this tournament. I know. I'm surprised more guys haven't reached out. I, I, and they might, and they <laughs> probably will. Only on Sports Grid. 
0.6 seconds remaining. Big drama here in this game. Always frustrating when your final four parlay and bracket gets busted, but here we go. I'm done. Look what he is now. He's on FanDuel, plus 120. Almost even money to win the tournament. So you actually, if you did get him at plus 260, you got a pretty good, a better investment than you had before. Just saying. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decision that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. Uh, some news here, sad news from Major League Baseball. Hall of Fame manager Whitey Ford, uh, uh, excuse me, Whitey Herzog of the St. Louis Cardinals has passed away at the age of 92, uh, seeing these reports coming from outlets in St. Louis. So rest in peace, Whitey Herzog there. Uh, okay, now let's get to the National Basketball Association where the Los Angeles Clippers are playing their final game of their careers in the arena in LA and the management there decided to let them go out with some food and some concessions. In fact, they took care of their fans last night in the game before they moved. Steve Ballmer, the owner, covered fans at the concessions on the last day of the regular season uh, during the Rockets Clippers game. So congratulations to them. Nice job there honoring their fans by letting them have all their concessions for free. You don't normally see this in any sport, but great job by the owner, Steve Ballmer, there. All right, that'll do it for our show today. Thanks to Eric Lindquist for coming on and talking some NBA as well as Greg Sussman with the big award for us here at Sports Grid, which is certainly awesome. I would encourage all of you who are watching our show for the very first time, put this, uh, you know, your reminder in to watch our show every day, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern. We have some great shows coming up for you. I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Also, thanks to Jacob Kamaker from Sporting News, our producer, Frankie, today. Great job as well. Uh, also, Mike Mazio from Legal Sports Report. Now, after this show is over, every single day, the next show that comes on is called The Early Line. If you missed it earlier today, it airs at noon Eastern right here on Sports Grid. That is followed by Pharrell Coast to Coast at 3 o'clock Eastern, then in-game live, game time decisions. And for those of you watching the National Basketball Association play in games and you're looking for positions potentially to bet, whether it's in-game, before the game, or even for future games, we have you covered with all of our programming tonight. So make sure you watch us live. I'll see you tomorrow for a recap of tonight's games in the NBA, a preview of tomorrow's games, and also the very latest in Major League Baseball, the NHL, and as we get you ready, for the NFL draft as well. So hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. I'll see you tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern for our next edition of Newswire right here on SportsGrid. Have a great day.